it's very wonderful text uh, uh, called atma vidya vilasa of shri sadashiva brahmendra before i begin and before i introduce uh, uh, the teacher let me start with a small prayer vakratund mahakaya koti surya samaprabha nirvignam kuru me deva sarvakaryeshu sarvada sada shiva samarambham shankaracharya madhyamam asmadacharya paryantam vande guru paramparam shri gurubhyo namaha hari om uh, viewers today we have swamini swatma vidyananda ji uh, who, who will be taking these Uh, classes on atma vidya vilasa just to give a brief introduction to those who do not know i am sure most of the audience are already very much familiar with the swamini ji and i have been following her teachings for some time so swamini uh, swamini ji is a long time disciple of parama puja swami dayananda saraswati ji and uh, swamini ji has taught at several universities nationally in us at us uc berkeley and many other places as well she is widely recognized as a scholar of advaita vedanta and is and uh, uh, she is internationally renowned as the acharya of the advaita vedanta tradition and she is also known in interfaith as a interfaith leader and a scholastic author of vedanta responsible for the inception of the all india movement for seva aim for seva a non profit enabling rural indian children to receive proper education and uh, she widely tours uh, across the world for seminars lectures uh, on various aspects especially related to uh, advaita vedanta and uh, she is the acharya of arsha vigyana gurukulam which was founded in 2004 and has centers in atlanta uh, ga eugene and uh, washington dc detroit and many other places Uh, we are very fortunate to have you swamini ji thank you for agreeing to do this session on a on a this is a this is a text that i have personally somewhat affinity i could say and i wanted to uh, organize a session like this on atma vidya vilasa for a long time so my personal desire and uh, has been also fulfilled today by you thank you very much swamini ji uh, look forward to the session please uh, go ahead om sahana vabatu sahana bhunaktu sah viryam karavavahai tejasvinavadhitamastu ma vidvishavahai thank you to nitin for choosing this text because of his choice we are able to enjoy this this weekend it is a text of 64 verses and those who know me normally i would take 60 classes minimum to complete this and now i am in the unenviable position of having to finish this in six sessions so i just cut out the zero you know zero is shunya it doesn't matter <laughs> we can cut it off so 60 minus if you cut off the zero it remains 6 and actually as nitin was saying it is usually just saturday sunday but uh, having uh, he had some pity on me and he gave me one, one more extra day so for which i'm thankful we, we can um, we can take all that we can get here this is a very you know before we get into the text and all this i started to think it became a very interesting puzzle how to give this text to people 
in this amount of time? How to do that? It became a very interesting challenge. So then if you do the math, it is like uh, you have to cover, like if we do it line by line, verse by verse, which is not very possible, but even if you do the gist of the verses, then that means you have to cover at least 10 verses each session. So that is that that could be one way. That way you remain faithful to the text and you just go as the text goes. Then another method could be that you just read, when you read the text, you extract certain uh, main tenets, points of Advaita Vedanta of this particular text and then present that. You know, that is also very interesting. So then I, I, till last night, I could not make up, make up the mind, which way to go with this? Because both of them have their uh, uh, advantages. There is definitely an advantage of sitting and listening to the verses being chanted and looking at them. And, and there is a joy also there. And there is also an advantage to going with the broad themes and making a little picture. Of, of that. So as a result, we are going to do both. <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. How? Don't ask, okay? Because after the opening prayer is chanted, uh, Bhagavan is in charge. So I'm just humbly giving my sankalpa there and hoping that it will just uh, take place, however it is supposed to be, okay? So this text is called Atma Vidya Vilasa. So this is very interesting, the word vilasa, that generally means the uh, reveling in or something like that. But then if you go to the root uh, of the, the V is just, a, 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 it's a, a pratyaya, it's a, it, a, it is a upasarga, it is a prefix. So then there is lasa. Lasa is actually the, the, the feminine aspect of the dance of creation, uh, which as we know is called Tandava. So Tandava and Lasa, they are, uh, com they complement one another. If Tandava is vigorous and full of uh, enthusiasm, Tandava is the mover and the shaker of the universe, the projector, uh, the energy that projects, sustains and retracts. Lhasa is more of a, uh, uh, Lhasa is more of a receptive dance. It's a dance of receptivity. It's a dance of acceptance. It's a dance that, that uh, cools that is always in tandem with what, that which is Tandava. And if we look at Lhasa as the dance of the Jiva, then it is not cool at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing cool about the Jiva's dance. Jiva's dance is like the dance of a cat on a hot tin roof. Okay. <laughs> the, the tin roof is samsara. <laughs> oh, Rahimam, Pahimam, full of upset, full of pain, full of sorrow and no rhythm at all. Now crying, now laughing, now mad, now sad and all the time feeling bad. This is the Jiva's, so to speak, dance. It is very far away from Lhasa. So if we look at Lhasa from the standpoint of Jiva, what would it look like? It would look like the graceful movements of a Jnani in life. Jnani means the one who has understood without a shadow of doubt, without a shadow of vagueness and without any errors. The one who has understood one's nature as free from pain, sorrow, fear, etc., etc. Free of the clutches of samsara that make living itself difficult. So that is the one that is able to be in acceptance, 
be in receptivity and be uh, in tandem with jiva srishti jiva srishti jiva's projection why because there is a total lack uh, uh, sorry ishvara srishti ishvara's projection why is one able to be in tandem with ishvara srishti because for a gnani there is no jiva srishti jiva srishti means uh, how i would like things to be how i see things depends on my own raga and dvesha strong preferences and prejudices and how i relate to things how uh, is is not outside of my own projections my own projections means my own subjectivity my own pain my own sorrow my own fears this is what it means and so therefore we have to uh, see that the withdrawal of these projections is uh, uh, is tantamount to atmagyana it's the same as atmagyana self knowledge is nothing but the withdrawal of these kinds of uh, projections which uh, is a misinterpretation of uh, three things i my own self i am an idiot i am mortal this is all misinterpretation i am no good nobody loves me i don't have enough i am insecure leading one to have wrong decisions in life so these are these are misinterpretations with regard to one's self then there are misinterpretations with regard to others this one is an idiot that one is a donkey all these things we have this whole litany of abuses about uh, about the universe then we have what else uh, we have projections about the jagat the universe the, the not just people in the universe but about the universe itself so hot so cold so terrible what's happening in this world etc then finally the moving the blaming finger across ishvara because ishvara is seen as the author of all this confusion in the jagat and in my own head and so ishvara becomes a very uh, a common uh, place uh, for the blame to be put and so these are all the misinterpretations and uh, the misinterpretations of ishvara bhagavan lead us to even come up with religious beliefs and uh, which which have really nothing to do with it god is great okay so what be careful god is very loving okay but you you have to be careful <laughs> otherwise there will be prakopa uh, god will get angry and if god will get angry terrible things happen to you these are all things one has internalized and uh, because of one's own projection so one cannot make up uh, one's mind whether one is living in a world of an angry god or a loving god uh, and you know at best we can say the whole thing is very very odd yeah that's all we can say about this thing. and so this is the these are all the misapprehensions which Uh, are the uh, direct uh, consequence sakshat consequence the direct consequence of the eclipse of atma ajnana and what does the eclipse of atma ajnana mean eclipse of atma ajnana means that there is a uh, there is some kind of a shadow just like if one has cataracts there is a shadow over the uh, the vision and you can't see properly and uh, you see shadows you see everything uh, dark or you see it distorted and so once the cataract uh, is removed and the vision is restored then you see everything brighter in the colors are much more uh, prominent and one is able to see things as they are rather than as one wants it to be so atma gyanam or self knowledge means the removal of this particular shadow of uh, the wrong perceptions which is the cause of this uh, which is the cause of this uh, distorted idea of jiva jagat ishvara 
everywhere. This is what the problem is. And so therefore it has to, it has to be removed. And the removal of that is uh, because of Atma Vidya or Atma Jnana. The removal is not an actual removal where you take some where you take some eraser and clean it out or where you cut it cut out the cataract. It's not an actual thing. It is more of a, a cognitive removal because the shadow is not perceived. The shadow is not available for objectification. It is so much become a part of oneself. So, Atma Jnanam is there and it is experienced, but it is not there as an object to hold on to and to dissect uh, physically. Atma Jnanam is manifest more in the form of a misapprehension and that has to be corrected. And so, this, the correction of it is called Atma Jnanam. And the one who has Atma Jnanam is called Atma Jnani or Jnani for sure. So therefore, the vilasa here, the, the dance of the jnani, the dance of the jnani free from cacophony uh, is, is, is here for all to see. And it becomes a source of uh, delight and envy simultaneously. Why? Because everybody wants to be like that. Everybody wants to be at peace with oneself. Everybody wants to be uh, dropping these misapprehensions. Everybody is tired of feeling angry, feeling jealous, feeling sad, feeling at uh, uh, unease with oneself. Everybody wants to be different. How different? Contented, appreciative, non-demanding, objective. This is what everybody wants to be, universal. So therefore, this Atma Jnanam is not a property of India. Or because the Upanishads were born in India, it doesn't make Atma Jnanam a property for India alone. This is for everybody, for everybody who understands that for me there is something to know uh, and I don't know something and that... Uh, has to be corrected. So this is a universal knowledge. And then having said this, this uh, uh, the, the Atma Jnani becomes a source of curiosity. As we see in the Bhagavad Gita, Sthita Pragnasya Ka Bhasha, Arjuna asks, how does the person of knowledge talk? How does the person of knowledge walk? How do they eat? How do they drink? All these things I want to know, oh Krishna. Oh Lord Krishna, please tell me. But why is this Arjuna asking this? Because Atma Jnanam is the ticket to freedom from samsara. I want to be able to recognize what that looks like in a person. Because then only I know whether I want to emulate it or not. Fortunately for us, we have a, uh, uh, we don't say that Atma Jnanam or freedom from samsara happens after death. If it happened after death, like in many other uh, uh, organized religions, uh, if Atma Jnanam happened after death, if uh, somehow, or this freedom from samsara was not possible until death came into being, then uh, we are doomed. Because then we have around us no role models at all. Nobody to look up to and nobody to study from. <laughs> Who are you going to study? Because all the teachers are in heaven or wherever they are, <laughs> not in this world. <laughs> And so anybody who parades as a teacher is likely not a teacher. Uh, they, they are not jnanis. So you have to study from an ajnani, the one who doesn't know, in order to know this doesn't work at all. And so therefore, Atma Jnanam is, is, uh, is available here and now. And the person who has removed this self-ignorance becomes a delight for all to see. And that person is called as, is known as a Jeevan Mukta. 
the, the one who is free even while alive. And it is a very covetous situation because uh, one may have studied the Upanishads, but without, uh, in, without spending that time uh, in, uh, in the presence of the Guru and internalizing the message and fully imbibing the, the message, then what happens to the person? That person becomes um, shallow without really having this knowledge. Uh, so the person who has imbibed this message is the one uh, who still has to live in the world. And that is where we covet that kind of a understanding because of which we are able to see this person walking, talking and undertaking certain works perhaps uh, in the world without stress, without fuss, without mess, which is a lot to say, which, we, which nobody else can hope to do and without any entanglement whatsoever. And so... This, uh, 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 this text is an autobiography of the self. It is, uh, it is an autobiography of oneself as a jnani. And that is why it is so delightful. Very, very, very delightful. And uh, it is delightful because it uh, tells not the story of one Sadashiva Brahmendra who got, who got his uh, uh, knowledge from his guru, who was known as Paramashiva, um, uh, 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 Paramashivendra Saraswati. Uh, no, he, he, this, uh, this text becomes delightful because it is like looking in a futuristic mirror through the looking glass, <laughs> uh, you know, magical looking glass, which automatically if you can imagine a looking glass which automatically readjusts all your features to look the best you have ever looked before, which tucks away all the things you don't want them to come out and which makes you look slimmer than you are, better looking than you are. I mean, imagine the price of that mirror. <laughs> imagine how much we would pay to get to have that kind of a mirror. And of course, if there was such a mirror, it would be in limited edition because the corporate world is, uh, is very smart. They would not release many things all at the same time because somebody is getting rich off of this. So imagine how coveted this mirror would be if such a mirror were to exist. And what if I told you that such a mirror does exist, but not in a way we thought? Not in the way of making the physical person, you know, the, the, the person of the, uh, the, the physical persona, uh, quote unquote, beautiful according to certain standards of the, uh, uh, of the society. And neither does this mirror make the personality beautiful according to certain standards of the society. Oh, pray tell, what does it do? <laughs> It shows you yourself exactly how you want to be. Exactly how you want to be. But what do you mean exactly how you want to be? And how do you know how I want to be? And how do you know that how I want to be is not how, how he wants to be? Maybe he wants to be different. And how do you know that it's just one mirror fits all? It cannot be the same. How I want to be may not be how she she wants to be here exactly how everyone in the universe, if you human mind, want to be. <laughs> without doubt, without fail. This is amazing. So we are about to gaze into this mirror for the next three days. And, 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 and a mirror which without, uh, without any, any, uh, any compunction tells the truth. Uh, you know, who is the most beautiful of all? If you ask the mirror on the wall, it will say you to everybody who gazes in it. It is not telling a lie. Because the, the, pro, the question is, where is this you placed? Where is this I placed? You means I. Where is this I placed? If the I is placed in the body, then of course I will have a lot of complaints. 
I don't like this feature. I don't like that feature. I don't like this. I don't love this. I don't look nice and I want to be. And this is, this is why. Because you have a problem with your body. That is keeping all the plastic surgeons in Florida uh, employed. <laughs> Think about it. If nobody had a problem with our bodies, then there, there would be no, the plastic surgery would not even exist. Unless, of course, it was something really corrective to deal with some uh, scary defect or something like that. So, so this, so this is not the question of trying to uh, nip and tuck and take out and add and all these things. This is not what it is about. This is not about changing something on the level of the body in order to be acceptable. Neither is it changing the personality nor the mind. Then what is it? What is there to change? <laughs> there is in fact nothing to change. It's the question of discovering oneself. And to use another mirror analogy that appears in the third chapter of the uh, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Lord Krishna says that when you look into the mirror, if you see a distorted, distorted reflection, what do you do? You clean the mirror. <laughs> yeah, you clean the mirror. And so here we are talking of the inner mirror of the antakarana, the instrument, the mind, uh, because of which uh, whatever we see in the outer mirror becomes unacceptable. So the I is not placed in the body. Neither is the I placed in the personality, nor the mind, nor the bunch of likes and dislikes, nor the possessions of what I don't have, or the dis uh, what I have, or the dispossession, sense of dispossession, what I don't have. Neither as the agent of action, I am so and so and I have done all these things in my life, nor as the, uh, as the experiencer of other people's doings. Oh, I am doomed because this one put me in this kind of a situation. So this is blameless and without Papa Punya, without the burden, uh, the so-called burden of this uh, uh, previous karmas. This is what the I is and this is what we are being invited to look into and take a deep drink of what, what there is. The beauty that there is there, that is there, is the beauty of ourselves. So this is a, uh, what should I say, this is a, the, the, the next uh, six sessions will be a mirror gazing exercise to look deeply at all the aspects of the self described by the Upanishads, given by the Gurus and internalized by the students. This is what it is. Now, this, uh, uh, the author uh, of this text uh, lived in the, uh, uh, in the, in the beginning of the 1700s, 1700s, he lived and then uh, um, he was uh, known as what is called Abadhuta. Abadhuta means the one who has cast off everything. So there is no rules, there are no uh, do's and don'ts. Ko vidhihi, ko nishedhaha, as the Shukashtakam says. Uh, Shuka was another example of an Abadhuta. And uh, Avadhuta also is not uh, uh, following the uh, decorum and uh, or the etiquette of the of the uh, of the world. It's like no hello, no thank you, <laughs> no please. <laughs> oh how nice you are here. Nothing, no rules. Yeah, the, if you give something to the avadhuta, there is no elation, and if you take something away, there is no dejection. And this is, the, this is uh, uh, you know, the, not that there are gradations of jnanis, but there is depths of immersion into this knowledge. And the avadhuta is the end result of this immersion. So there are certain ways in which how deeply one is immersed is gauged by one's uh, demeanor uh, to the, uh, with regard to the world and with regard to, you know, all kinds of things. 
and uh, this is uh, this is what this is how it is gauged and avadhuta is at the there are six gradations uh, you know don't uh, please don't ask me to name them because i do not remember right now but and it is not pertinent but avadhuta comes at the end of this so this is how he was regarded and he was a kind of an all rounder and this sadashiva brahmendra uh, brahmendra saraswati and uh, it is a uh, he he was uh, musically oriented and very uh, important compositions are attributed to him khelati mama hridaye ramah khelati mama hridaye beautiful shanti videh suta sahachari so a, a very beautiful song dahara yodhya nagara vihari moha maharnava taraka kari it's full of vedanta there's nothing other than vedanta khelati mama hridaye ram rama plays where in my heart <laughs> rama plays in my heart and uh, this who is this rama this rama is the one the rama we know is the one who who vanquished the demon king and the demon king is what ragadvesha mukasura mari he the demon king of 10 heads he is so many ragadveshas uh, and the person with ragadvesha is ego egotistical so that's why so many heads cannot make up his or her mind and that is the demon to vanquish and ayodhya nagari the one that cannot be conquered is the realm of the self where one can play where rama plays like this and uh, and sita is shanti and when sita is abducted rama is becomes the jeeva helpless hapless he gives a completely different uh, meaning of the ramayana in this song so like this uh, there is another one pibare rama rasam very beautiful sarvam brahmamayam re re so he is known for all these wonderful compositions but they are all just vedanta even studying these uh, compositions one can really get enlightened it is they are so deep their depths has to be appreciated then he is credited with a lot of shlokas for the guru and then there is uh, guru and uh, uh, dakshinamurthi also dakshinamurthi navaratna mala he has composed out of which he borrows a couple of verses we'll be seeing that he borrows a couple of verses out of that and then um, uh, the in this in this verse and he also wrote one uh, um, other uh, works he wrote a brahma sutra vritti uh, a, a kind of a commentary for the brahma sutras and some other uh, vedantic works also but atma vidya vilasa remains by far the best of his compositions it uh, brings out uh, the best of his poetry and the best uh, of his iteration of the knowledge and uh, it gained a lot of it has gained a lot of traction you see when uh, you when something is there and then like yoga take yoga yoga has been in india for how many years thousands 5000 years at least minimum <laughs> yoga has been there okay and if you look at the Uh, the, the temple in Ta- Tanjavur, all the yoga poses, everything is talked about. It is five thousand years, easily. And then, um, but then it had to go abroad, and it had to be blessed by uh, teachers abroad. And then it came back to India with a new identity, and it became famous also in its own land. so same way you know if somebody famous looks at something and uh, and that particular uh, verse or that particular uh, uh, work becomes immediately famous atma vidya vilasa became very famous because uh, one uh, shringeri acharya in the in the 90, early 19th century nrsim bharati uh brought it out completely and he said that this is the tenet for every jeevan mukta everybody who wants to cast off the uh, the shackles of samsara and subjectivity has to read this has to understand this he made it compulsory to be able to ta- uh, to be taught in the uh, matha and then after that his successors made it very famous and chandrashekhar bharati the most uh, uh, you know the most recent one ha- had to the acharya uh, not the current acharya but the the, the one before that uh, also lived his life 
by these verses and wanted these verses he said supposing if i'm lingering on the on the death bed uh, just recite these verses for me this is what he had told so once the shringeri acharyas took this up as their own uh, uh, kind of a covenant by which to lead their own lives it just became extremely famous for everybody who is either a gnani or a gnani wannabe for both <laughs> so if you are a gnani then you are just resting in the glory of these verses if you are a gnani wannabe then it becomes a lakshana the, the the gnani lakshana becomes a sadhana to get there just absolutely wonderful and uh, sada shiva brahmendra lived for 100 years it is said and uh, he was uh, he credits his guru parama shivendra and we don't know who it is and this uh, uh, the 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 word saraswati at the end indra saraswati suggests that it could be a seer from the kanchi mat the kanchi shankaracharyas all have the ending indra saraswati jayendra saraswati like that you know indra saraswati so uh, sada shiva brahmendra parama shivendra saraswati like this um, so but then there are two parama shivendra saraswatis who were the pontiffs of the kanchi mat but one was in the 10th century and one was in the um, sometime in the 16th century 15th century so it cannot be either of them unless uh, you know they were manasa gurus to him but then he he it, it, that also doesn't seem right because he is very much uh, saying he is studying with the guru and the guru has given him this etc etc so we don't know and this is true because sometimes the best of gurus are uh, you don't know much about them that is the uh, that, that is that is how it it always have, has been because they don't advertise and uh, because there is nothing to advertise and you only advertise uh, uh, you know a lot about yourself and your doings when there is insecurity and here there is no insecurity so there is no advertising at all so just briefly i mean you can read up more uh, about all this uh, but just to you know start off so that you will be have a connection to the text and the um, uh, so a little bit about the author uh, has been given so now without much ado let us look at the prayers uh, the initial prayers so we can get a understanding of the um, uh, the understanding of the uh, 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 what is the how the work starts and a little flavor into the verses okay everybody has the text right does everybody have the text it was placed on the uh, on the link um nitin do you want me to share the text uh, uh, on the on the screen yes uh, swami ji you can share it uh, okay, i'll screen. share it yeah yeah are you able to see yes yes yeah. swami ji yeah okay wonderful bilingual yeah trilingual if you say english also yeah so it's got a, a translation in tamil and it's also got uh, in english chin mudrita kar kamalam chintita bhakte ishtadam vimalam guru varama adyam kanchana niravadhika nanda nirbharam bande so this is wonderful guruvaram adyam i bow to that kanchana i bow to that guru that one guru who is who is the best of all the gurus guruvara gurunam varishtaha the one who is the most exalted among all the gurus and who is that the one who is the uh, the real guru who is the real guru the real guru who is in the fake background behind me <laughs> background is fake but uh, guru is real here real and really exalted because why this is bhagavan dakshina murti so the first two verses are for uh, the uh, in in uh, uh, are are in the uh, this thing uh, eulogizing uh, the lord 
from which all the knowledge has come. So, Chin Mudra, uh, Chin Mudrita Karakala, Kamalam, whose lotus hands, Karakamala, lotus hand, the hand that is like a lotus, uh, hand that is like a lotus means beautiful and soft. This is just a stava. This is a how to how to look at the uh, how to look at this um, uh, the uh, the hand is is given here the 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 one which is soft soft means it's not been uh, anything any act of adharma that is the idea it has not been hitting people it has not been doing any kind of adharma this karmendriya in the form of the hand karakamalam which is in the form of the chin mudra. Sin Mudra, see if I go this way, you can see here in the background also, Lord Dakshinamurti is sporting what is called a Chin Mudra. And so this Chin Mudra is formed by the thumb and the forefinger becoming a, a round and the other three fingers straight. The, the, these three fingers stand for the body-mind sense complex and this is the I notion and, the, uh, and this is Brahman and the I notion is united with Brahman. And then this is what is called Chin Mudra and one is away from identifying as I as the body or the mind or the senses. So this is what is uh, uh, being talked about. So Chin Mudrita Karakamalam, so unto whom, who has, uh, I bow, one day, I worship, whom, the one who has this kind of a uh, Chin Mudrita Karakamalam and Chintita Bhakta Eshtadam means the one who bestows upon the de devotees whatever they, they want easily. Vimalam, free of Papa Punya. Guru Varam Adhyam, the first and the foremost of all gurus and the best of all gurus. Niravadhikananda Nirbharam uh, and the one who is, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Nirbharam means uh, the one who is dependent upon what? Upon his resting upon his own glory. What is his own glory? His own glory in the form of the overflow of the endless Ananda. So, I bow to this Guru. Why? Because from the Guru only all knowledge comes. Without Guru, what, what knowledge is there? No knowledge is possible. And so, I bow to this Guru who is the, who is the most exalted one. And so, the first uh, prayer is for Lord Dakshinamurti. And the second one is also for uh, Lord Dakshinamurti, but in a slightly different uh, way. Now, just, uh, similar, but slightly different. Vatataru nikata nivasam, Vatataru vijnana mudrita karabjam, Kanchana deshika madhyam, Kaivalyananda kandalam vande. Very beautiful meter. It's called Arya meter. Arya means noble. <laughs> so, a very noble shloka in an apt and noble meter. So, Vatataru Nikata Nivasam, uh, one day I bow to that one who is that, um, that Adhyam, the first one, Deshikam, the first and foremost of teachers. Uh, and who is that Vatataru Nikata Nivasam, who resides at the foot of the banyan tree? And, uh, and who is Vatataru Vijnanam? Vatataru Vijnanam means who is very clever. Uh, who, who is extremely clever and uh, uh, who is extremely clever in the self knowledge, which is which is displayed just by one uh, little mudra of the hand. This whole uh, the I am the whole is just you know brilliantly displayed. It takes so much brilliance to display it like this. And who is Kaivalyananda Kandalam Deshikam teacher. Uh, Adhyam, the first one, Kanchana, this, uh, the one who cannot uh, be described at all. And then uh, Kaivalyananda, the one who delights in the Ananda of oneness. Kaivalya is oneness. Kevala means only. Kevalasya Bhava, the abstract noun of uh, Kevala is Kaivalya. Onlyness, not loneliness. <laughs> This you have to be very clear because otherwise we think it is, oh, it is, uh, what is that? It is uh, um, loneliness. If I am only one, it is lonely. No, 
there is a very big difference an oceanic difference between loneliness and loneliness loneliness i don't want and loneliness it cannot be confused with loneliness loneliness means i'm complete i'm full there is nothing other than i and everything that i can see here is all a, a an extension of this i alone so there is no loneliness in loneliness so kaivalyananda kandalam means the one who is sprouting this ananda ever sprouting this ananda ever freshly established in this ananda i pray to this uh this guru i just wanted you to have a sense of the verses and how they go you know very nice yeah and uh, uh, and then the next two uh, uh verses are for the parama shivendra saraswati his guru they are all for this niravadhi samsriti niradhi nipatita janatarana sphuran naukam ಪರಮತ ಭೇದನು ಘಟಿಕಾಂ ಪರಮ ಶಿವೇಂದ್ರಾರ್ಯ ಪಾದುಕಾಂ ನೌಮಿ ಪರಮ ಶಿವೇಂದ್ರ ಆರ್ಯ ಪಾದುಕಾಂ ನೌಮಿ ಪಾದುಕಾ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಫುಟ್ವೇರ್ ದ ಚಪ್ಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗುರು ನೌಮಿ ಐ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಐ ಬಾವ್ ಟು ದಿ chappals of the guru the footwear of the guru who is this guru the one called parama shivendra who is the noble one the holy one so arya means noble holy just like the meter here there is a little pun <laughs> that's why it's in the arya meter because it is all dedicated to this knowledge which is noble to the guru who is noble and the student who becomes a jeevan mukta who is also noble so who is this parama shivendra so who who's uh, uh, padukas i am saluting so the that parama shivendras the is is described as uh, uh, as the one who is uh, uh, the the uh, niravadhi samsriti niradhi niradhi means ocean niravadhi means without a break samsriti niradhi without a break the ocean of samsara patita fallen without a break jana the the the, the people who have fallen and are keeping on being uh, ground up and uh, you know by the and eaten up by the ocean of samsara they they come out for a breath of air glub 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 and again down <laughs> so always drowning for the people who are niravadhi means without a break drowning in the ocean of samsara who have fallen first fallen in, into the ocean of samsara because of their own delusion and then they are drowning in the ocean of samsara for that uh, for such people uh, uh, janatarana sphurat sphurat means ever ready ever present nauka nauka means boat ha ah. nauka nauka yeah so in hindi you say nauka because in hindi the pronunciation is different it is in sanskrit how you see it is how you pronounce nauka nauka means boat so for the boat the one who is this parama shivendra or rather his chappals are a boat out of samsara so you catch hold of the chappals and you are rescued from samsara and uh, it becomes the last uh, what should i say uh, the last thing to grasp as one is going down under one more time you just grasp the bo- the, the boat of samsara and you are rescued and uh, what is this uh, what is this parama shivendra like his purat means ready janatarana the one to one who is ready to cross the people to make the people cross to be an agent of crossing a ferry for all the people who are drowning in the ocean of samsara and so what does he need to be in order to be this presence who is bringing everyone out of ocean of samsara what do you need to be paramata bheda anughatika <laughs> paramata bheda anughatika means the one who has refuted wrong ideas and wrong notions about the self about the jiva uh, about other jivas about ishvara about the jagat 
That is what is the nauka. So the boat that is in the form of a uh, constant and complete rebuttal of duality, a, a rebuttal of all kinds of uh, wrong notions about the self, about everybody. And uh, that, that is what it takes to be the boat out of samsara. So if I want to get out of samsara, I have to catch hold of that kind of a vision which is embodied in the Paduka of this Paramashivendra. Very beautiful, very nice, very nice verse. The next one also is the uh, is is for the uh, uh, is for the um, no, the next one is not for the Guru. The next one talks about uh, himself and why he is presenting these verses. One can write a um, poem or a set of verses or a prose, any kind of work for many reasons. You can write it to make money. You can write a book like How to Win Friends and Influence People. <laughs> An immediate bestseller because who doesn't want to have friends? And who doesn't want to influence people? You just get a few like these catchphrases. Yeah. Or you write a mystery novel and just put a few catchphrases. Uh, and, uh, you know, the bereaved butler. And then you say, oh, why was the butler bereaved? And what happened? Is the butler the killer? Or is the butler the victim? Let us read. So some kind of an anticipation is there. Correct? So you write for many reasons. You write to become, people write sometimes to become famous. People write sometimes to be, um, uh, what is that, uh, to, to work out some things in their head. Sometimes that's also people write. And people write out of uh, a sense of wanting to share something with others who don't have this uh, clue. They are clueless about this and I know about this, so I'm going to share. That is another reason why people write. And so here he gives the reason why he is writing this book, which is a very different reason than uh, all the other reasons that we have discussed, why people write, write uh, these kinds of works. So let us see his reason. Deshika Parama Shivendra Adesha Vashad Udbuddha Divya Mahimaham Swatmani Vishranti Krite Sarasam Prastav Mikin Chididam. So he says, I uh, present Prastav me. I present. Stu also means I praise. So I present, and there is a double meaning here. I praise. What are you praising? Something here, just a few passages. He's belittling his own nothing because he's very humble here. I'm just presenting a few passages here and there of these things. And for what? You know, the Swatmani Vishranti Krite. Krite for the sake of Swatmani in myself. Vishranti, Vishranti for the sake of just resting in my own glory. So that these, this uh, knowledge which has been received from the, the Guru, this knowledge of course which have been received from the Guru, now it is residing in me and I want to lay back. The, the knowledge is like a nice memory foam mattress and I want to lay back on it. Aram say, very happily, without any worries, I want to lie down on it and just revel in my own glory. And for that reason, I'm writing it. I'm not writing to educate you. I'm not writing because you don't know. I'm, not, I'm writing this for me. It's, it's you know, Atma Shuddhaye, sometimes, you know, in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. Yoginaha karma kurbanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddhaye. Karma yogi does all the karma yogis do all the work in the world, uh, having given up the uh, attachment or to the outcome, having given up the uh, penchant for controlling the outcome. Why? Atma shuddhaye for their own inner cleansing. Here it's not inner cleansing, but inner abiding. So, Swatmani Vishranti Krite, because I want to relax, I'm writing this. 
I'm presenting this because I want to relax. So how did you get this knowledge? I got this knowledge, he says, Parama Shivendra Adesha Vashat. So because of the teaching of my Deshika, the teacher Parama Shivendra. Udbuddha. Udbuddha means that which has ar arisen. Divya Mahima. Divya Mahima means this, uh, this glory which is out of this world. What was I? I don't know. And then what am I now? I don't know. And I am this glory. And before we come to the conclusion that this glory is just all, uh, you know, a, a hot air, he says, no, I am the glory of my teacher. <laughs> I'm the glory of my teacher. I'm, the, I'm an extension of the glory of my teacher whose teaching has made me into this magical being who wants to do nothing but rest in my own glory. And for the sake of resting in my own glory, I'm drawing a picture of the mattress and the pillow. And if you can take it and rest in it, that is well and good. This is the, this is what it is. So uh, not bad, you know, thanks to, uh, you know, thanks to this particular format, we have finished three verses. Amazing, very nice. And so let's take a five minute break here before we go crazy. And so just a little water break or anything, just uh, jump up and down or move around a bit and we'll reconvene in five minutes and move forward. All right. Okay, sir. Yeah, so I will not say the closing prayer. That means you have to come back. But I will stop sharing this uh, thing. So just uh, we'll take a little brief pause and then we'll come back. Om Tat Sat.
welcome back continue with the continuing with our uh, discussion of atm vidya vilas i thought this third verse is really really beautiful because in that it in this verse we see the student has merged with the knowledge has become one with the knowledge and by that same virtue has become one with the guru because who is the guru the guru is the one who has become one with the knowledge the student has become one with the knowledge the student has become one with the guru and the student is the glory of the extension of the guru is the extended glory of the guru that is the better way of putting it and uh, so and then why is are these verses of praise for this vidya being presented because they are the uh, they are like the, these verses are like the mattress that gives good rest <laughs> so he is telling that this is just like i want to just relax in this i want to fall back within myself and relax in these verses that's why i'm writing these verses because there is a deeper relaxation when you put something down on paper and when you really get into it and so i i'm just i'm just stitching a mattress i'm filling the mattress for you <laughs> so that you can also equally get a, a deep relaxation because the mattress is everything as we know and in america they have made such a big industry out of mattress we cannot tell you there is soft there is hard there is medium and then in a double bed there is soft on one side and hard on one side because the person you are sleeping next to may want a hard side and you may want soft and then suddenly there are mattresses who will change the soft into hard and hard into soft suddenly in the middle of the night you want it hard then you you just to to have one remote and keep clicking and then you will do this so as we know the mattress is very important for sleep sleep means oneness that's all it is sleep is just oneness nothing else sleep is where you are one with bhagavan sleep is a form of moksha about which you don't have any idea that it has come and gone so but here is a different kind of oneness a oneness which is more of an awakening rather than a sleep it's very very beautiful it's a, this oneness is the opposite of sleep in sleep you have no awareness at all here you are all awareness nothing but awareness is there you are nothing but awareness you are not the body you are not the senses you are not the mind but you are aware full and you are just awareness consciousness itself in sleep there is uh, what is that you know there is uh, um, the fusion of subject and object here there need not be any fusion of subject and object subject is there i am very much there objects are there i can see them but i am not affected by them so that is so the the the, the whole prapancha the whole uh, universe made up of this five elements does not have to cease in order for me to cease to be in order for me to be myself in order to for me to have a rest from the uh, from the travails and tribulations of samsara uh, this is not needed at all then what is needed what is needed is something entirely different what is needed is this that uh, I, uh, that the whole world can be exactly how it needs to be my vision is without the travails of samsara that i am a samsari that i am subject to pain subject to sorrow that i am an idiot all these notions have been taken away these notions have been completely taken away and when these notions have been taken away what else is there other than one's own glory that is exactly how this uh, atma gyanam is different from sleep so this is a mattress of relaxation where you sink into the glory of yourself deeper and deeper very very nice wonderful and then 
uh, what is this mattress made up of? Because every mattress has to have some kind of a fluffy material, correct? It has to have some uh, co coils, what is that, coils, coiled mattress. And uh, Pujya Swamiji, my guru used to always say that the first coiled mattress was the one that Lord Vishnu lay on <laughs> Adi Shesha in the form of the snake. And uh, so uh, that is the, uh, that, that is what he used to say. So it, it sometimes has coils and it sometimes has fiber uh, and it sometimes has what is uh, uh, cotton or something called silk cotton. There is a silk cotton tree uh, that is there in India. So then uh, what else does it have? It can have some kind of uh, down, feathers or foam, all these things it has. Or sometimes it has a combination of all this because you want to make the mattress exactly right. And this is how you do it. And so what does this mattress of self-relaxation where you fall back on and are just completely unworried. What is it made up of? The materials are given. The, the recipe to make this mattress of having good rest is given in verse number 4. Nirupa manitya nirihaha nishkala nirmaya nirgunakaraha vigalita sarva vikalpaha shuddho buddhas chakasti paramatma. Very beautiful. So what is this? What is this self? I, I, am, I am leaning on myself. Aham Atma Leenaha. See, here it is in, in Sanskrit and in English. We have the same thing. <laughs> Atma Leena means leaning, leaning on the Atma. That is what it is. And, and so what is this if I am resting in myself? And what is this Atma mattress? What does it look like? Atma mattress has no stress. Okay. So first is it is incomparable, meaning it cannot be caught by words. It is undescribable as an object. It is undescribable as object means what? It is not something that can be uh, that is that can be grasped by the sense organs or the organs of action or the mind. Why? Because it is you, the describer. The truth, the content of the describer is who is being talked about. So the describer cannot describe oneself as, as an object. So it is the subject, it is you. So then nirupama nitya niriha. Nitya. Nitya means always the same. Limitless. Always the same means without limits. Nitya. Doesn't change. Doesn't age. No beginning. No end. Oh, this mattress is sounding wonderful. <laughs> Incomparable. And then niri, uh, nitya. And then uh, uh, niriha means without any movement. It's just uh, it's just the same always. He's not restless. And you don't want a mattress that moves. Okay. Yeah, it should not, it should not keep going here and there. Then nishkala. Nishkala means without any parts. Kala means aspects. Nishkala means no parts. And you don't want a mattress that has parts. Because then one part lumpy, another part clumpy, and then two mattresses have been taken and joined together. And then, you know, you are sleeping in the joint, right in the joint. Not fun. So no parts. It's an eternal mattress of no part where you can just rest. And it is called Atma Mattress. And you can just rest in the glory of this I. And this is what it is. Then it is Nirmayaha. Nirmayaha means free of any kind of uh, uh, delusion. It is does not have even a whiff, even a lesha, even a slight remnant, a patina of... Um, what is that called? Uh, this uh, Agnyan. No Agnyan. Maya, as far as the Jiva is concerned, the meaning of Maya is mm, the Agnyanam connected to the eye, centered on the eye. So, when you talk of Maya with relevance to Ishvara, then it becomes all knowledge, the power to project and uh, all these things. Uh, but here, when you talk of Maya, 
with regard to atma with regard to the truth of the self then maya simply means ajnana self ignorance so free of even a little bit of self ignorance and what do you, what does it look like i want to now see this mattress <laughs> i want to lie down and it tell me it is twin mattress or it is single double what else is there queen and then king well, what kind of mattress is it well sorry it is nirguna kar its form is that which is free of free of all forms and free of any attributes no you know nirguna kar hai we can also say nirguna hai plus nirakar hai nirguna kar hai it is itself formless and then if because it is formless it is free of all gunas gunas means attributes sattva rajas and tamas what is sattva godliness any kind of compassion all these qualities which one strives to have sattva rajas a uh, movement is called rajas out of balance it becomes restlessness anger etc tamas inertia and out of balance it becomes slothfulness laziness resentment sorrow depression all this is called tamas so this is the this is what it is it is this i is free of the the spell it's not bound or it is not under the spell of the three gunas that is very difficult how because everything trigunya vishaya vedah the whole veda and its subject matter o oh arjuna uh, lord krishna says is is uh, is subject to being influenced by the three gunas you look at food it has some guna or the other you take fried food it is uh, what uh, causes tamas and uh, 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 garlic you take it is tamas and rajas and then uh, something else you take it is sattva uh, like this it is uh, you know they or even food has the, these gunas but the eye shines without the gunas because it is free of the spell of the gunas because the gunas are not separate from the eye but the eye is free of gunas that is what it is i is ishvara who projects the gunas but which is free of the gunas and then vigalita sarva vikalpah from which all choices vikalpa choices and um, what should mutations and dif- differences are all just melted vigalita from from whom from which i all the choices all the uh, different uh, sankalpas and vikalpas uh, all the different kinds of uh, things have completely melted away they have melted away vikalita sarva vikalpah from whom everything all the concepts concepts and notions have melted away because any notion you have puts you in the ocean of samsara that is what it is because all notions are subjective so he, he, this is not a notion so all notions have rested into which atma and that atma which is free of all notions is what is being talked about vigalita sarva vikalpah shuddha free of papa punya buddha all knowing how is it all knowing because it is in the form of consciousness i know i am and that i know i am does never becomes i don't know even if you say i don't know chinese language what do you say i know i don't know and that first ontological i know never becomes i don't know that's why it is shuddha buddha atma always it is this so what does this atma do it is chakas chakasti chakasra deepta that is the root and it shines what shines paramatma ishvara so this atma mattress i was going to describe but then it has become paramatma mattress it has become a place uh, it has become ishvara that ishvara in its in his or her essential form that is free of all conceptions incomparable free of being uh, having a name or a form free of all vikalpas and then free of papa punya free of gunas and this is how that ishvara shines as what as i 
Ishvara shines as I because I am also that same consciousness, free of form, free of name, and I am this Ishvara. The fourth one uh, becomes actually a Mahavakya, indivisible, whole, untouched by anything. It is what it is, and um, so this is the this is this is the mattress upon which I am going to rest. Then we can say, wait, 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 wait. I have a question. Before you rested on this mattress and you made this mattress for yourself with the help of the Guru, you got this mattress, the Guru gave you this mattress to rest on in the form of this knowledge. What were you doing? <laughs> Where were you? How did you get to this place? Because I also want to go to this place. Svavidhyaika nibaddhaha purvan karmani muhyamana san daivad vidhuta bandhaha svatma jnanan munir jayati. He says, I was also like you. I was not any different. I was also sva avidya ekani baddhaha. I was also bound by, by my ignorance. I was so shackled you by. Can the share the screen, perhaps. Completely shackled. Some and then what happened? Share the screen, perhaps. Sorry? You can share the screen, perhaps. Uh, oh, I thought I was doing it, you know, because I was looking at it. I thought everybody <laughs> is looking at it. Sorry. We'll do that right away. Swavidya, Swa Avidya, Swavidya. One's own ignorance. You cannot blame the ignorance on the neighbor. Baddha, bound. And why does it have a binding? Why does one, one's own ignorance have a binding action? It has a binding action because it binds you to uh, certain pressures. It binds you to wrong notions and understanding. And because of these wrong understandings, you have desires uh, to fulfill those, uh, you know, to overcome those wrong understandings and the pressure to accomplish that. There are desires and those desires in turn create a pressure in order to be, uh, to, to, to be serviced. The desire wants to be immediately fulfilled. And then that's why it is a bondage. Uh, what is that? We avidya shrinkhala, avidya kama karma shrinkhala, a chain of uh, a chain of this uh, uh, avidya which leads to kama, which leads to karma, which is action. And so this is the this is the baddha. So the one who was bound, what was this person doing? Kurvan karmani uh, amukhyamanasan, keeping uh, you know uh, karmani all the works. Purvan, keeping on doing the various actions. How? Out of a sense of delusion. Because every action has a result and I am a karma phala hog. This is what the person thinks. I want the results of action. And for wanting the results of action, I am going to, I am going to, do, to keep on doing the actions. And then what can interrupt this? Nothing. <laughs> This is a delusion because I'm not an agent of action. That is what the Upanishad says. And I'm not an actor. I'm not the, the recipient of the results of action either. And so, but still I'm continuing to do the action means what? There is a sense of delusion. Mukhyamanasan. And daivad, uh, uh, daivad means out of the grace of Madhava. That is daiva. Purva punya. Purva karma, because of uh, previous karma and because of the grace. What is this grace? We talk of fourfold grace. Guru's grace. The Guru accepts you as a disciple and teaches you even though the Guru may have other things to do and out just out of a sense of compassion, that is grace. Then then we have Ishvara's grace, which brings forth the Guru's grace. How did you meet the Guru in the first place? Bhagavan's grace. Correct? And then we have the grace of the Shastra. That I can, uh, you know, that I can read something on a screen share and then understand it. <laughs> that itself is a great act of grace. Shastra Kripa. Kripa means grace. 
और अनुग्रह शास्त्र कृपा गुरु कृपा एंड देन वॉट एल्स यू नो गुरु ग्रेस शास्त्र ग्रेस ईश्वर कृपा एंड देन आत्म कृपा आई हैव टू लेट दिस टीचिंग इन if i have no trust with regard to these teachings and if i have don't if i don't listen to to this uh, inner uh, uh, you know call for this knowledge and to change the way i have been going about my life then i am not allowing myself the best of the gurus can come and sit but i will not listen the best of the teachers can come and teach me but i it will not go in because of these four graces daivat vidhuta bandha the person because of these four graces operating simultaneously the person is freed from the bondage ishwara's grace brings forth a live guru who is ready to teach and then that teacher uh, awakens in one a love for the learning of the shastra and the shastra starts to speak and then one uh, then comes back and brings to this uh, medley one's own grace in the form of the receptivity then swatma agnyanat vidhuta bandha one is freed of self ignorance and then as the result of this teaching and then uh, what munihi the contemplative one jayati is victorious over what over the self ignorance and how did you get to free of this self ignorance the next few verses talk about the uh, talk about the uh, how this knowledge takes place very beautiful let us see maya vashena supta मध्य पश्य सहस्रशस्वनाच प्रबुद्ध दिव्यनंदवारीधौ कोपी स्लीपिंग बिकॉज ऑफ माया माया मीन्स अज्ञान स्लीपिंग द स्लीप ऑफ सेल्फ इग्नोरेंस वॉट डू मीन स्लीपिंग द स्लीप ऑफ सेल्फ इग्नोरेंस नॉट अवेकन टू वंस ओन ग्लोरी नॉट अवेकन टू द फैक्ट दैट ऑल दैट इज हियर इज नथिंग बट माई सेल्फ अलो और यू कैन से ऑल दैट इज हियर इज ईश्वर एंड आई एम दैट ईश्वर दैट इज ऑल्सो ओके बट ऑल दैट इज हियर इज नॉन सेपरेट फ्रॉम मी द वन हु इज नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड द वन हु इज कंप्लीटली अलूफ टू दैट मीन स्लीपिंग avidya nidra uh, sukta so sleeping the sleep of ignorance and why because of maya because one is not awakened to one's glory why because atma agnana simple then uh, in this um, pashyan sahasra shahasvapna and dreaming all kinds of dreams in the sleep of ignorance what kind of dreams will be the dreams will be nightmares oh my god something is going to happen in the future somebody called me one day and said why is nothing wrong in my life it's creeping me out sachi baat hai somebody called and said how come i am very worried i said what happened nothing is wrong that's why i am worried it's like a calm so this is this is what it is even when everything is all right the jiva is keeping on uh, conjuring up a nightmare something bad is about to happen i know it i have a premonition at this rate something will happen you know <laughs> lakshmi will tell vishnu and just send him some karma he is waiting for it he is anxious already send him something in advance then it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy or the Mm, but why do you always talk of nightmares all right let's talk of a pleasant dream oh i'm going to i'm going to win the lottery and then i'm going to get a nice house then i'm going to get a nice spouse and then i'm going to have children and they will all be playing in this nice house and then we'll live happily ever after <laughs> this kind of dream it's a projection this is what it is dream here means if the sleep is of self ignorance the dream is a projection 
That's all it is. So the two kinds of projections, pravritti, positive projections or objects towards which I am attracted and I run or nivritti, things I run away from like a snake, like fears, all these things I run away from. These are the only two kinds of dreams. Positive projection, dream in the form of a positive projection, dream in the form of a negative projection also. <laughs> these are the two kinds of dream, dreams. And then I was going through, I was kind of shifting in the nightmare and then going back to this te terrible kind of a sleep. And then the sleep of the dead, actually. <laughs> and then I was getting getting up disoriented, seeing another dream and turning over and sleep of the dead again. And then I heard some words and I was shaken up. I was shaken awake by the teacher's words. The teacher's words were like a tap on the shoulder or a shaking of the shoulder. Deshika vachap, vachaf prabuddha. So I have become now Deshika Vachaf Prabuddha means the one who is awakened by the teacher's words. So the teacher's words, when you want to wake somebody up, what do you say? You call out their name. You say, come on, wake up. But here the teacher called out my name. It was a different name. <laughs> it was not my own name. <laughs> but why did I wake up? <laughs> I should wake up only when my name is called. Well, to tell you a secret, I always wanted to be known by that name. <laughs> oh, you sinless one. Oh, you beautiful one. Oh, you one without a second. Oh, Bhagavan. This is how the teacher called out to me. Oh, Atma without any problems. Free of guilt, free of hurt, free of fear, free of pain, free, free of sorrow you are. Actually, secretly, that's how I was longing for someone to call me. But they gave me some name and then on top of that, some uh, pet name. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in, uh, in uh, ancient, not so ancient, actually, in about 20, uh, 30 years ago, even 50 years ago, there was still child mortality was there. And then because of that, uh, Mm. Uh, you know, children would sometimes unexplained, you know, health care was not very advanced. Unexplained, the children would just pass away. And then after the child had died, when the next child was born, the parents were very, uh, this thing, you know, uh, frightened that this child will also be taken. So the whole idea was to give the child a terrible name uh, so that you don't fall in love with it too much. And not only you, but uh, whatever forces are there, the inimical forces which are in the form of devatas, your own karma you can make in the form of a devata. So those devatas are not attracted to it. Oh, gundu, something you call it, you know. <laughs> and in Karnataka, there's one, you know, they're common only among the elders, you know, kallappa, something like that, stone, stone, you know, oh, gundu. Uh, like this, like that you call. And uh, then, uh, you know, then the evil eye will not be on the child. But then you ask Mr. Gundu, do you like your name? He will say, not at all. <laughs> My parents must have been out of their minds. Why did they name me like that? But here the teacher calls by a beautiful name. One of the many, 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 many names of the Atma. Endless names of Atma you can have. The, the one that is free of Papa Punya, you who are free of Papa Punya, please wake up. You who are beautiful inside and out, you who, who don't, who are incomparable, wake up. You who cannot be enclosed in the form of a thought, wake up. You who are free of sorrow, wake up. You who are free of strife, wake up. You who are free of pain, wake up. You who are free of, uh, uh, you know, any kind of jealousy. So, fear, wake up. This is, you know, this is the opposite of a lullaby. It's a wake up by. Yeah. <laughs> in Sanskrit, we call it suprabhatam. This is how in any temple, the presiding deities are woken up. We say, you know, because of you, only the morning takes place. Because of you, the sun shines. 
Because of you, everything comes to be. Because of you, the rivers flow. Because of you, the wind blows. Please wake up and set all these things into motion. Don't do this to us where you withdraw your life force from this universe. Very beautiful. So every temple will have this Suprabhatha. And here, for this wretched jiva, sleeping, <laughs> sleeping the sleep of ignorance and drooling the drools of desires, wants and don't wants from the side of the mouth constantly, and then uh, and then seeing all kinds of futuristic projections or past dejections all the time, reliving the past in the form of nightmares. The, the teacher composes a suprabhatam in the form of the, the, this knowledge, which is now before us in the form of these verses. The teacher's suprabhatam, the teacher's opposite of a lullaby. What did we call it? Vekabai. <laughs> so the teacher's vekabai wakes one up. Deshika vachaha, deshika uh, vachanath, you know, prabuddhaha. Deshika vachaf prabuddhaha. Divyati. Then the person woke up. No, no, what? What? How could in the beginning the person was like, what's going on? What's happened? Very disoriented. What? Suddenly shaken up, woken up. And then, oh, thank God you woke me up from that terrible recurring nightmare of being born again and again and again, of having karmas and having karma phalas and of being responsible for so many people and doing all things to them and then them never saying thank you <laughs> and then you being all your on your own. Everything is dysfunctional and everything is upside down. Oh my God, finally the world is right side up. <laughs> there is one childhood story in India where the spider, you know, the spider, the baby spider and the mummy spider are on the ceiling. Okay. And the baby spider tells the us, the mummy spider, Mom, why is everything, everything upside down? <laughs> so cute, you know. But that baby spider is the jeep Aryan. That is the upalakshana, a metaphor for the jiva, who himself is upside down, but who thinks the whole world is upside down. So you are topsy turvy. You are doing. You are in a permanent headstand, <laughs> and then you think, oh, everything is upside down. The teacher in waking you up writes the whole world. Oh, thank God! Now I can dance because the whole world is not upside down. I'm not afraid of falling. Divyati Ananda Varidhav. So first I was drowning in samsara. Now I am just, you know, uh, on a nice raft, on the raft of the Upanishadic knowledge, sipping a tall, cool something, the verses of Atma Vidya Vilasa drink, and then just floating on the ocean of samsara. Uh, but samsara is not touching me, even though I'm bobbing up and down on it. Before I was drowning. Before I was frowning, then I was drowning. Now I'm just floating very nicely. Oh, but what if a big wave comes? I know it's a dream. I have been awakened from that dream. The wave cannot dislodge me. Oh, but you may fall off the raft. The raft is as though. <laughs> the raft is really a craft of the imagination. It's an as though raft. I don't need a raft. I am the raft for the whole universe. I don't need a raft. This is just the beauty of poetry that the author is imagining that the one is on a raft of self-knowledge. And actually, I'm adding to that imagination. It's just about being on, on the uh, on the waters of samsara without going glub, 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 glub. <laughs> Let's take one more. Let's take the next one as well. Swamiji, do you want to take questions? Pramapasya Svikriti Nijarupa Satchidanandaha Guru Varakarunapangad Gaurava Masadhyam Madhya Tiprajna. How did you get this way? How are you now just drinking the tall, cool uh, drink 
called Atma Vidya Vilasa. That is the name of the drink. You are on the raft of self-knowledge and just floating on the ocean of samsara. Actually, I correct myself on the notion of samsara, not the ocean of samsara. So how? How do you do this? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, the I had to take off something. I had to take off something. What did you have to take off? Prakrita bhavam apasya as you know uh, asitva having thrown off cast off having cast off prakrita bhava what is this prakrita bhava bestial tendencies not my best tendencies <laughs> yeah very fine fine uh, difference here oh bestial tendencies means those tendencies that are the best no bestial means beastly ah now i understand okay good Beastly tendencies, chindi, bindi, you know, the whole world is divided into two, mine and what else? Not yet mine, soon to be mine. <laughs> Asuric tendencies, snatch this, get that. And, uh, you know, this is seen everywhere. Even in the airport, you see these Asuric tendencies. One person will be sitting, three bags in the next three seats. All their bags, the bags can go on the floor. It is a crowded place near the near the gate. Still one hour more for the flight to uh, the, that flight to board, and people are sitting. Some people are elderly looking for a place to sit, and this person is eating their popcorn or whatnot <laughs> with the two seats free in the right next to them, or one free seat on either side free, and then they have just what should I say, uh, expanded themselves by putting various bags. You know, we see the bags and think somebody, they are saving the seat for somebody. Half the people think that and they don't even ask. And then if somebody goes and asks, then very reluctantly with a little mental, uh, you know, disrupt disturbance, they will slowly remove the bag. <laughs> what, a, what a thing. This is Prakrita Buddhi. One seat you take, yes, you occupy, no problem. That is, you, you are entitled to that in, a, in an area, in a lounge near the gate, no problem. You sit. But then you take up the table, you take up the chair next to this, you take up the seat next to that. That is called uh, taking up more because you want your personal space. <laughs> and um, this is all Prakrita Buddhi. Snatch and take this from somebody, take that from somebody, don't give back, take, take, take. This is one aspect of Prakrita Buddhi. Prakrita Buddhi is also taken everything wrongly. This one doesn't like me, that one doesn't like me, and so the reactivity is Prakrita Buddhi. And then uh, uh, swiping at somebody, row, like a cat, Prakrita Buddhi. And then uh, I'm growling like a dog, protecting one's territory, Prakrita Buddhi. And kicking like a donkey, if anybody comes near, Prakrita Buddhi. So this time blessed with a human birth, but all the donkey birth and the monkey birth, restlessness, donkey birth, kicking tendency, dog birth, territoriality, cat birth, revengefulness, all this has not gone. So all that has to be cast away for the teachings of the Guru to, uh, to be internalized. So, Prakrita Buddhi, Buddhim, no, it doesn't say Buddhim, what does it say? Bhavam, Prakrita Bhavam, uh, Apasya, having cast off this, I have to do inner work to cast off these kinds of tendencies, Svikrita, then I first cast off and then, I, then only I have the ability to accept what is my true self, if I have clutch, if I am clutching on to the false self of these bestial tendencies, then how will I catch on to the, to the real self? I will not be able to catch on to that. Even if 100 gurus were to come and tell me, I will not be able to catch on to that. And so Svikrita means having accepted, having been in acceptance of one's own nature and Nijarupa, uh, one's own nature, as what? Satchidananda. I am not this body, I am not the mind, I am much less my samskaras or my vasanas from previous births. <laughs> what am I? 
I am the source of all existence, Sat. Sat from which all this has come. Sat by which all this has uh, is sustained. Sat unto which everything goes back. That is called Sat. And that Sat is uh, in the form of Chit. It is not first Sat, then Chit. The Sat that is Chit. That source of existence which is sentient. It is not a jada sat. It is not a sat that is dead. It is a sat that is sentient, all knowledge, alive. And which is limitlessly existence, uh, existent, which is limitlessly knowledgeable. That is who I am. I am the Satchidananda Atma. And when will I know this? When I give up these bestial uh, samskaras and tendencies, the subjective projections when I give up and when I am living in this objectivity, then the, the words of the teacher the, who woke me up from this slumber, the, I delight in that and I understand that and the words of the teacher speak to me. So, speak, uh, speak krita nija rupa satchidananda guru vara Karuna Pangat. Uh, Guru Vara Karuna Apangat. Apanga means many things, but here it means the Kataksha, the sidelong glance. Even the Guru mistakenly looks at me on the side. Uh, just a little sidelong glance is enough for me to forget and discard the Prakrita Buddhi. Discard fully the Prakrita Buddhi. And then become samskrita. Samskrita means well taught, well taught uh, by the Guru and understand myself as Satchida, uh, Satchidananda. Guru vara karuna pangat gauravam asadhya. Asadhya means apanna, uh, uh, gaining. Gaurava means uh, guruho bhava, becoming great, becoming the same as the Guru in knowledge. That in, in understanding what the Guru knows, I know. Guru knows, I am Brahman, the Guru knows. Then I also know I am Brahman, I am Satchitananda. I become the same as the Guru. And the Guru is Satchitananda, I am Satchitananda. Where is the Guru? Where is the Shishya? Nothing is there. It's all just the, the greatness alone, which is Satchitananda. Having gained that, Pragya, the knowledgeable one, uh, uh, Madhyati rejoices, dances and rejoices. Now we can stop here. There is a lot more that is uh, not talked about and I am going quickly because this is first of all um, an advanced uh, 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 you know, text and it assumes we know a lot and I am going with that assumption and um, so we will uh, hopefully study it uh, at length some other time. Verse by verse we can study, but this much is enough for now. And uh, uh, we will stop here. And if anybody has any questions, uh, we, you can ask the questions. Thank you, Swaminiji. Uh, yes, you can post a question in Q&A box. Or if you're watching yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, there is Q&A box. Yes, if you're yeah. watching on YouTube also, uh, you can post a question. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Please repeat. Uh, uh, yes, if you are on YouTube, watching on YouTube also, you can post the questions on YouTube. I will take it up and ask Swaminiji. Uh, Swaminiji will wait for a few minutes for, for any questions to come Not up. Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Swaminiji, as uh, we are waiting, um, it, it comes to my mind that uh, this text is, uh, is a rather than a composition, it appears to be more of a spontaneous outpouring of uh, uh, Sadashiva Brahmendral in a particular state. I, I think uh, he, he mentions that uh, in the beginning that he's composing it uh, to abide in Atman. So it, 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 it appears to me uh, to be indication that it was a spontaneous outpouring rather than a intellectually thought out uh, composition. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are absolutely correct because you see, at this level, there is no difference between the intellect and the heart. It's all one. And the spontaneous outpouring is a very good way to put it because when one is in this, uh, 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 in this depth of abidance, 
whatever comes out is just that knowledge and it will come out in many many forms and uh, he has uh, um, he has a kind of a uh, the work has a kind of uh, framework it you see a certain framework which i'll talk about in the next session in the evening session but interestingly enough that framework itself is very uh, loose and it goes back and forth there's a lot of jumping so definitely yes but it's not that he was in a trance and he composed this but he, he it, this was he, this is how he was like all the time <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I, I think I think there is an anecdotal story about how sometimes he was floating on the Kaveri River or sitting like a madman in the uh, banks of the river. And once somebody yes, complained yes. to his uh, guru uh, that uh, see what he is doing, your shishya has to rein in. So the guru said, yeah. uh, if only I had attained that state <laughs> that he is in. Yes, but the guru got up and clapped his hands. Oh, good, <laughs> wonderful! He is acting like a madman, <laughs> and we'll we'll see a few more verses of what this mad person acting is like. And uh, there is another, uh, you know, there is a very interesting um, when you told about this anecdote with the guru. Another guru anecdote is also there, where uh, in the beginning he was so brilliant and he he defeated everybody in debate. Everybody he defeated in debate. And then uh, after that, the guru, and he was a little condescending about it. He was like, aha, you don't even know this much. And then he was always talking. And then the guru one day said, Sadashiva, when are you going to keep quiet? Right now, master, he said. And he stopped talking completely. <laughs> and he would just, uh, and that is amazing. That's really amazing. He, he was completely silent. Stop talking because this is what my guru wants and there is something to learn from this. Just <laughs> so, so amazing. I think so, so many things to learn from this, all these great people yes. Uh, yes. that has walked yes. on this land. Uh, uh, Swami, right. do you think uh, 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 it will be correct to say that this text is especially useful for Nididhyasa, uh, meditation and reflection upon to... Uh, as a text manual for reflection. Yes, it is a Nididhyasana Grantha. We have in the tradition, we have what is it called? Uh, Prakarana Granthas, which basically systematically lay out the vision of the Upanishad. Uh, and, uh, you know, what it takes to gain this, how to approach the Guru, what are the pedagogies, everything is given. Or we have Manana Granthas, like the Advaita Makaranda, which is for kind of a mentation, where you can just sort of uh, look at the logic uh, with the help of some logic, which is Anukula, Shruti Anukula Yukti, a logic that is going along with the Shruti you can use and kind of internalize the teachings mentally because some people want that and then we the, this is a nididhyasana grantha uh, where you just relax and abide in this but also it can be used as a teaching of what is uh, what is this knowledge that also we can use thank you swaminiji we have not uh, thank you very much and i uh, think i won't stop for uh, questions because i think these are all vedanta students they don't they won't have much questions <laughs> if they have we will see yes okay? i think uh, yeah. the last minute we have received one question i'll just read it out oh. uh, who okay. is an who is an avaduta uh, we often say that even chandrashekar bharati was an avaduta and others such as sridhar swami was avaduta can all enlightened be called avadutas Yeah, well, you see, we, we already talked about this. Maybe you joined a little late. Uh, yeah, Avadhuta means the one who has no regard for the, uh, for the uh, society, whose knowledge is uh, uh, firmly, who is firmly established in that knowledge. One goes around without any regard for the society. For the Avadhuta, there is no rules. They have given up also the rules. They have given up the concept of sannyasa even if they have taken it. 
and often they won't wear clothes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, yes, uh, Chandrasekhar Bharati is there, and uh, other examples, Sridhara Swami, and all that, all of them. So, Abadhutas are enlightened, but all enlightened beings need not be Abadhutas. This way we can take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Swaminiji. Uh, Thank for the you very much. Session. Yes, see you again in the evening. Take care. Om Tatsat. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachyate Pur Nasya Pur Namadag Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Thank you Nitin. Thank you Swamiji. See you later. Yes. Om Om. Um, viewers okay. uh, don't forget to log in in the evening at 6 p.m. and uh, we will meet again in the evening. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha.